I am one of three new development staff members. Our new uh, assistant athletic director for development is in the back of the room, Jason Fairfield. He is uh, an SIU alum, 1999, yeah, something like that. I was close. Um, Christina Pisoni, I believe, is in the room. Yes, she's waving. She does everything. I'm sure you guys know her. Um, she played softball here in um, up to 7 to 11. Uh, she's from Heron, now she's baby and now uh, she will be away from us uh, for a couple months. She's due in December with her first child. So, uh, We welcome back uh, our new general manager of Learfield Sports. John Urig was here for a long time. He left for about a month. <laughs> He went to Central Florida and he loved Carbondale so much, he said, forget Orlando, I'm coming back. So he has been here all of one day. Uh, and then uh, Corey Kazmarski, Kazmarski is uh, the uh, other Learfield employee and Corey is an SIU graduate as well. Uh, he graduated last spring, and he started uh, about a month and a half ago. So we have a lot of SIU graduates here, that's for sure. Uh, we do have uh, a couple players here, Rashonda Napier, Redshirt Junior. She was uh, an all-conference player last year. And uh, she has big expectations. And Carly Corrigan, she's also a junior. And then Cartesia Macklin is uh, the lone senior. She's the old lady on the team. And we'll talk to her uh, here in a few minutes. But let's get started. This is uh, Inside Saluki Women's Basketball. This is the debut. The 2015 season will kick off uh, coming up. Uh, in three short days, SIU travels to DePaul. Coach Cindy Stein uh, joins me. I'm Bryce Williams. This is on uh, 105.1 every Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, we will have uh, shows once a month, the first Tuesday of the month that are taped here in the Cook Club. But Coach Cindy Stein, 17 and 13, Coach, high expectations for the first time in a while for this program. Well, and that's what we want. I mean, we'd rather have the target on our backs. We've talked about that uh, on many occasions. Um, this group for this year is, is trying to figure out what that means. Um, and this is going to be a process. But I, I really believe in this team. they got a great attitude, great spirit. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that first game. You return five returning starters, so all five starters will be back this year, nine letter winners. This is an old team, four seniors, three juniors, and for the first time in a long time, you have an upper-class team. Well, we do. I feel like we can put a lot of experience on the floor, um, although we're looking for one of those starters to return from a knee uh, injury. Um, Who's that's been a probably a little bit slower process than we want, uh, but at the same time we've got some really good valuable experience that uh, we'll be able to utilize. Two exhibition games uh, so far. Last Saturday you beat uh, Maryville 66 to 60. You beat Kentucky Wesleyan 96 to 64. Really shot the ball well in the second half uh, on Friday against Kentucky Wesleyan. What have you learned so far about your team? Well, I thought it was really good that we can get so many kids in because as much as, uh, you know, we've got a couple kids out right now, so giving some of our new post players, and I say new post players, they're returners, but they didn't get a ton of time last year. I think that those are two crucial positions for us, our four and five position. So, you know, getting those young ladies a, a lot of time and experience, and Maryville presented some problems because they had a 6-1 post player that uh, was tough to handle, and I thought it was really good for us, and that's why we play Maryville. They're a very good team. Uh, they present a lot of problems, especially if you don't communicate, um, and we're still learning that, especially with different lineups. I feel like we have five kids we could put out there, and they communicate real well, and they play really well, but uh, as soon as we start substituting, uh, sometimes that changes and the dynamics change. So we've got to work and, and 
you know, sift through some of that, those changes and adjust. Let's start with Diana Pierre. She has not played in either game. What is her status? Uh, she broke a team violation, uh, broke a team rule. She's, she's been out for two games so far. Is she day-to-day? -day? She is. It's, uh, we've talked about that. She's uh, still suspended today. So uh, that's one of those things that, uh, you know, we, we pretty much keep that in the inner sanctum of our team of what's going on, but, uh, you know, we, we um, evaluate that on a daily basis, and she's still out. Asia Washington. Uh, Asia has battled bad knees uh, for the last couple of years. She had uh, knee surgery, uh, not a major knee surgery in the offseason, but she's coming back into shape. Uh, she averaged 10 points and 7 rebounds. Uh, she is one of only 25 players in program history with 800 points and 600 rebounds. What's her status not only this upcoming week, but over the next month or so? Well, I felt like early on this uh, fall, we probably started her out too quickly uh, from that knee surgery. And it, part of it's, you know, our blame is just that she really wanted to go and try to get everything done in the conditioning aspect. We should have probably backed off a little bit because she did have a lot of soreness and it never went away. So then we went the other way and completely took her off of everything, uh, gave her a rest, uh, everything settled down, and now we are progressing or pretty slow to get back on the court. Um, she's been able to go up and down the court. We probably could have played her some minutes this last exhibition, but I didn't want to do that because, again, we've got to be patient in this process. She's a very valuable member of this team, um, can bring a lot of things, so we want her full go. Uh, heading into DePaul will depend on practice today. We uh, Will it you know, evaluate that as well. She does a little bit more every day, and we evaluate her the next day on what type of pain she's in. Um, you know, and when a kid's had that many knee surgeries or and knee injuries, um, those things happen. They're going to probably, you know, they play in pain. Um, that's just one of those things you've got to gauge. Um, we don't want her to further hurt herself, so we've got to take it slow. We plan on having her play some minutes against DePaul for a length of t uh, a long length of time. I doubt that that can happen, but we'll probably be able to give her some minutes. You got to have good guard play to win in college basketball right now, and uh, you have three pretty good guards: Rashonda Napier, Cartesia Macklin, and then Kylie Gablehausen had a really, really good freshman season. She's back for her sophomore campaign. Yeah, I would agree, especially heading into to DePaul, who presses full court the entire time. They press on makes, they press on misses. Uh, they're always looking to trap you, um, and they'll continue those traps you know, throughout the whole 40 minutes. They don't ever take a break from that. So you've got to have kids that are very alert. You've got to have good ball handlers and passers, and um, those three do a pretty good job of uh, knowing the right areas. They'll have to play probably key minutes, um, but I would also – you know, add that we've got some other kids that are stepping up and, and also doing really good things for us, Carly Corrigan being one of them, that uh, has improved her ball handling, making good decisions out there. And I think everyone could see from the last exhibition game that she can definitely stroke it. We talked about Mercedes Griffin all the last year. Mercedes graduated. Uh, she came off the bench. She was uh, a great sixth man, guarded usually the best player on the opposite team. Now it's time for Corrigan, Kim Nebo. Some of those role players have to step in and take Mercedes' uh, role that she had last year that was a vital part to your club. Absolutely, and I would tell you that it starts with defense. Um, that's one thing that we have found and we've probably struggled with that we're still trying to find the answer to is uh, with the departure of Mercedes Griffin and actually Hannah Shores. Both of them were very, very scrappy, very quick. Um, really provided a lot of those, you know, get on the floor for loose balls and, and uh, come up with some extra possessions. Uh, we're missing that style right now. Um, we've got it at times, uh, but we're not consistent yet in those efforts, and we've got to continue to, to be better. Coach Stein will join us for another segment coming up. Remember, questions are right in front of you guys. If you would like to uh, write them down, give them to Cristel and Garcinet or Cat Martin uh, from the crowd. SIU opens up 
at DePaul. They're the number 22 team in the country. Southern's not beat a top 25 team since 1987. One of the best teams in school history. 7 o'clock. You can hear that on US 97. 7, 640, the pregame show on Friday. Cartesia Macklin coming up. We'll take a two-minute break. This is Inside Saluki Women's Basketball from Learfield Sports. Corrigan, I love her. Here we go, guys. This is Saluki Women's Basketball, inside Saluki Women's Basketball from Learfield Sports. Cartasia Macklin, one of four seniors, comes back for Coach Cindy Stein this year. Cartasia is a redshirt senior guard from Mayo, Florida. Florida. You've been here, do you feel old? I mean, you've been here forever. Uh, yes, I would tell you my age, but that would be inappropriate, you know, um, but uh, it has felt like a long time, but um, it's an honor to be back, you know, uh, and to have experience and to be with this group of girls. It's been, it's been great, and this coaching staff is awesome, so. You've been through really a roller coaster, right? If you look at uh, your entire career, you didn't win much your first three years here. How much did that 17 win team, how fun was it, and how gratifying was that experience? Uh, it was memorable. Uh, like you just described, uh, a roller coaster ride, that's exactly how it was. It gives you that, you know, adrenaline where you just up and down, but you enjoy the ride at the end of the day. So I think that's the feeling that I have at this moment. In my career. You wanted to play in the postseason and you guys were so close. How hard was that? I mean, you finished 17 and 13, maybe a game or two away. You know, you were a couple shots away from winning the quarterfinal game against Northern Iowa. Did it take you a while in the offseason to get over that loss and being so close? Yeah, it was uh, heartbreaking, um, but. With this group of girls, we knew we was coming back with a lot of returners. And uh, the next thing was you, you mourn for that moment and it's like on to the next thing. So I think that was our, our motivation and our expectations for that next year. And we had to prepare that, that after that fact. So I think that was the one thing we was thinking about, you know, once it was said and done. You played in the first seven games during the 2013 season and then sat out the rest of the year, did it take you an entire year to get your legs back, you know, get back into game shape? <laughs> yes, after all the baby fat went away, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, it did. Um, I was trying to uh, rush it back. Uh, it was just, you know, 
having a passion for basketball, you're trying to get back in it. But I realized that, you know, I have to follow what my body say at the end of the day. And um, that's what I did. And just trying to just slowly, like Coach talked about, progress. And that's how I was. And each time I had to just get better. And each time I wanted to go into conditioning and thinking like, hey, uh, that's the next step. So that's how, kind of how my mindset was. Cartesia Macklin's career stats 1,324 points at sixth all time in school history. She's about 200 points away from breaking the school record, a school record that's been around for around 20 years, but it's not all about scoring. 454 career rebounds, 368 assists. That is third all time in school history. If I ask you which one of those three impresses you the most? Uh, my assist. Uh, I like to look good passing the ball, honestly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I know Coach always give me, um, just has to say anything about my no-look pass. Just like always, especially on my right side, I'm going to act like I'm looking left, but I'm going to throw right. So um, that's my favorite thing to do. But the assist, um, I love the system ball. And that's some, some things I apply to life. I like to assist people and help people out. And I try to do the same thing in basketball. When you got here, did you expect to put up those type of numbers in college? Uh, not necessarily. I knew I was coming to a program that wasn't winning much, and I just wanted to make a difference and like go back to assistant, and I wanted to assist with that. So um, coming in, I just wanted to play basketball and you know be able to learn on this level what it takes to be a co collegiate athlete, and that's what I did, and found that more out e each day. So. Ten points, four rebounds, four assists last year. What are your goals coming into this season? Personally? Yeah. Um, uh, definitely just try to be a, a leader on defense. Uh, Coach talked about that a lot. And uh, defense, we lost Mercedes, so that's one of that's a huge role. And I was just talking to her the other day, and she was just like, it's just hard work. And uh, each day at practice, that's what I'm trying to do, concentrate on defense and what I can do to get better at that. So just being a leader on defense is one of my biggest goals. Team goals. Postseason or bust? I mean, is this how you look at it going into this season? Yeah, postseason is where we want to be at. And having this opportunity finally, uh, it's incredible. And I look forward to it. And we have to do as much as we can this season to accomplish that. So, Cartesia, best of luck uh, the next couple of months. And uh, have fun. You're the only player, SIU played DePaul four years ago in Chicago. You're the only player on either roster that has played a game between the two teams. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even know that. So I mean, <laughs> I'm excited about it. At senior guard, Cartesia Macklin, Cindy Stein back with us next. You're listening to Inside Saluki Women's Basketball from Learfield Sports. Welcome back to Inside Saluki Women's Basketball from Learfield Sports with 
Coach Cindy Stein, I'm Bryce Williams. We just talked to Cartesia Macklin. It's been a pleasure. You've had the opportunity to coach her for three years, and I know you got to love that smile on her face. Yeah, I, I would agree. She's probably got the mess, best smile uh, in the world. But, you know, we've we've got some kids that uh, I think we've got some good-looking players, so they have great smiles. And I'll tell you what, they definitely know when to shine them. <laughs> I've called her the heartbeat of the team. When she plays with energy on the floor, it seems like that your kids play that much harder. I would agree with that. Uh, Cartesia has the ability to get a lot of things done. Um, she is a great leader, um, especially when she leads by example. And I felt like she really got us going in both our exhibition games as well. And it was defensively, which I like. Um, and, and I would like to continue to see that happen on a daily basis. Right, C-Mac? <laughs> SIU and DePaul coming up uh, from Chicago on Friday night. DePaul, they like to score. They scored 87 points in their last uh, exhibition game. In their first one, they scored 134. First off, the style they run is kind of like UT Martin style that, that you played last year. Yes, they are very similar. They're going to get up and down the floor. I think they averaged 86 points last year. Um, so this is a team that uh, they can score in all five positions on the floor. Uh, they, as I said, extend their full court defense. Um, and they, they don't spend a lot of time running a play. So you've got to have your hands up. You've got to be able to uh, defend the drive, and you've got to be able to defend the three. The college women's game is going from two halves to four quarters. Um, there are several different rule changes. Uh, we have several questions, one of them being, which of the new rule changes will have the most effect on your game? And is all the rule changes positive or negative for the game? I, I'm trying to figure out if I can get fined for anything um, <laughs> on the bad. But uh, I would say that the new rule that I think will affect us the most and, and teams overall is going to be the last minute of play uh, because it's going to be much like the NBA. You get a timeout uh, with under 59.9 seconds and you can advance the ball to your hash mark. Um, so um, you don't have to go the full length of the court. Um, that's probably going to affect because it, it affects your defense. So how you're going to teach your kids on denying the basketball and trapping and um, there's just a lot of particulars. In fact, we'll work on that a lot this week on exactly how we want to play that out because you can't advance the ball at all and get the ball still at hash mark. Um, you've got to know when you're going to call that timeout immediately um, when gaining that possession to call the timeout. So it's just little, it, it, it seems like it's a little thing, but it's actually big because if you're post player gets the ball and kicks it out to your point guard and they're dribbling up and you call a timeout, you get the ball where the ball was, not at your hash mark. So we've got to work on some of those things. Do you see a difference playing four quarters instead of two halves? And there is no more one and one now in the college game. It's just two shot fouls. Well, that will help us because with some of our post players that get fouled a lot, like Diana, that uh, probably needs two shots every time. So that helps us. <laughs> um, I think that... Uh, some of those things with uh, quarters, I feel in the last two exhibitions, it affects your substitutions because your kids, there's so much time without a dead ball or a timeout that uh, they have to go longer. Um, I think our kids are in pretty good shape, so I haven't felt that. But just getting your substitutes, um, good time, and, and knowing kind of those rotations is something that you try to get figured out. Um, and honestly, I think that uh, the thing that affects us the most is we lost a timeout. So that affects us more than anything. And I hate timeouts, but I still don't like to lose one. So, um, you know, the other thing is the media timeouts are like two and a half minutes. That's, to me, a long time for kids to be sitting. I would rather have them in on us you know, elliptical or something that two minutes, but to keep them moving, but we're not volleyball. We don't stay in the whole time, so. You play DePaul on Friday night in the first round of the uh, preseason NIT. You're guaranteed three games. Can you get a home game, win or loss? I think we can. Um, I think that uh, especially, you know, when we win, uh, we'll be playing at home. 
Um, I think that uh, if we would happen to lose, I think that we have a good chance, but probably not as good of a chance, you know, than if we won. So we got to win. Biggest adjustment between last year's team and the new team this year. They were the hunter last year. Now they're the hunted in a way. Well, that's a mentality thing, and it's uh, – there's times I would like our kids to be, I always want them humble, but I also think that when you step on, on that floor, you have to believe that you are the best player out there and that uh, with that attitude that someone's got to stop you. And we don't quite have that all the time. You know, we lost that. Mercedes was always like that. Mercedes always thought she was the best player. And it, it showed, though. I mean, in her play, she, she made some great things happen. Um, we've got to have that collectively. You just can't have one or two, and I think that's the biggest thing is that we've got really good kids. They're nice kids. But when we step on that floor, you know, uh, we can help kids up off the floor, um, but we still got to have that attitude that, we've, that uh, you know, we want to have no mercy. We want to beat them by 20, 30, 40 and, and uh, keep the pressure on them. Two exhibition games, you won both of them, but as a coach, you always can improve. What what do you want to improve on from those two games? Well, I think everyone's heard me say defense is always coming to mind. I just uh, very defensive ori oriented. I think that you you never know when your shots off, um, and you've got to work obviously at being more consistent there. But I think that uh, your defense has to be on every game, and and just like playing DePaul, you you got to have really good defense. You've got to make stops if you want to win games. It comes up with defensive stops. So uh, I feel like that's the biggest piece that we need and I think that we have a group that does that um, but it's also getting the kids off the bench doing that same thing and and that's what we're working on is our depth and um, that's where I think this preseason WNIT is great for us we have to play at a high level very quickly um, and our kids will get their feet wet quick and I think it's going to make us better what's the next step for the program coach well I, I just think the, the thing that we are going to do is we're going to be a consistent winner in the Valley, uh, win Valley championships and go to postseason play on a yearly basis. That is our goal. That's something we're very committed to. Every single recruit that we sign, we talk to them about uh, being championship driven. Um, our players know that. They have embraced it. Uh, I really feel like this is an exciting year for us. Uh, this is a big year for us because uh, we've got a special group of players that, in that senior class that uh, they deserve to go out uh, very strong. And, and uh, Saluki Strong being our theme this year overall in the athletic department, I think that uh, this says what it's all about with the senior class. Team was young last year. They played Illinois, wasn't the best result. And then a month later, you played Oregon State, who was the number 12 team in the country. You led them at the half. Now with nine returning roster or nine players returning from that roster, is this group ready for the bright lights of Chicago? Well, I believe they are. I think that uh, it comes down to them having that swag that we talk about. They've got to come in. We have the talent to do it. Uh, we've got to have the confidence. We've got to have the focus, and we have to maintain that focus over long periods of time. And uh, this group's not used to doing that. Um, but at the same time, doesn't mean we can't. We just have to be very concentrated on it. That was Cindy Stein, SIU, and DePaul, the number 22 team in the country. 640, the pregame show on Friday night, US 97 7. 7 o'clock, the two games, uh, two teams will tip. We'll have uh, Coach Cindy Stein's coach, uh, show inside Saluki Women's Basketball every Friday or every Tuesday night at 6. 30 on 105.1. For Cindy Stein, I'm Bryce Williams. That was Inside Saluki Women's Basketball from Learfield Sports. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Again, the luncheons are the first Tuesday of the month. I believe uh, you can call Carmen at the uh, in the women's basketball office to re reserve a spot. Uh, the next one will be coming up December 2nd, December 1st, right back here at 1145. And thanks to everyone for coming.